In the past, humans generally used one of two greetings for comets. One, dear God, what is that thing? Terrible omens, surely we will all die in fire. Or two, dear God, what is that thing? Great omens, surely we will all have a big party where we will all die in fire. For example, the appearance of what came to be known as Halley's Comet in 1066 was seen as a bad omen for King Harold II. But conversely, it was a good omen for William the Conqueror. And because of their tails and transitory nature, comets were long thought to be products of the Earth's atmosphere. It wasn't until the 1500s when Tycho Brahe used parallax to determine a comet's distance. He realized that there were solar system objects like the planets. So good news, we're no longer regarding them as omens and everyone stopped panicking, right? Wrong. When Comet Halley approached Earth in 1910, astronomers detected cyanide gas in its tail. French astronomer Camille Flammarion was quoted as saying the gas could impregnate the atmosphere and possibly snuff out all life on the planet. This caused a great deal of hysteria. Many bought gas masks and comet pills to protect themselves. With the rise of photographic astronomy, it was found that comets often have two types of tails. A bright tail, composed of ionized gas, and a dimmer one, composed of dust particles. The ion tail always points away from the sun. It's actually being pushed away from the comet by the solar wind. We now know that a comet's ion tail contains volatiles, such as water, methane, ammonia, and carbon dioxide. These volatiles are frozen near the comet's surface, and as they approach the sun, they warm and become gaseous. This also causes dust on the comet's surface to stream away. The heating of a comet by the sun isn't uniform. Because of a comet's irregular shape and rotation, some parts of the surface can be heated by sunlight, while others remain cold. In some cases, this can mean that comets can have multiple tails, which creates amazing effects where different regions of a comet stream off volatiles. These ion tails can be quite large, and some have been observed to be nearly four times the distance of the Earth to the Sun. And even though they fill up a great volume, they're also pretty diffuse. If you condensed a comet's tail down to the density of water, it wouldn't even film a swimming pool. And so now we know that there isn't a clear dividing line between comets and asteroids. It's not the case that comets are dirty snowballs and asteroids are dry rocks. There's a range of variation. And asteroids can gain dusty or gaseous tails and take on a comet-like appearance. In addition, we've also found comets orbiting other stars, known as exocomets. And finally, one last fact, the term comet comes from the Latin cometa, which indicated a hairy star. So what's your favorite comet? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. And we couldn't do this without the members of our Patreon community. People like Mervyn Rolston and the many others who join us to help create and deliver great space and astronomy content. If you'd like to join our community, which gets you advanced access to episodes, as well as extras and behind the scenes content, click here and head on over to Patreon. Some kind of drill thing. All right, all right, no one will notice.